Okay, we're going to do two concepts today uh, in this vi video. We are going to do concepts uh, 5.4 and 5.5. They deal with forced harmonic motion with damping as well. So great examples of this are when you have something when you're uh, on a swing and you're pushing yourself using your legs to to uh, give yourself some, so put some energy into the system, but there's some damping, so maybe you're, the swing's going through water or air. Another example is the LRC circuit. And um, so lots of examples, and we'll do, do a lot of this. These two are not very hard. Um, the first one, starting from Newton's second law, derive the equation of motion for a driven, damped harmonic oscillator of mass m attached to a spring with elastic constant K. So I've drawn a picture of this. So if this is my spring, or elastic constant K, uh, and this is my mass M, and I've stretched that spring beyond its natural length. So if I, if I had been pulling it out this way, it would have, um, this, the end of it would be right here where this dotted line is. But I've stretched it out, and so that means that there's going to be a force that the spring is going to exert on the mass. And which direction does the spring exert on the mass? Well, it pulls it to the left because the spring is stretched. So the direction of that force is going to be given by Hooke's law. In this case, x, which is measured from the natural length out to the stretched length, is positive and negative kx would be negative, so that force in the x direction would be in the, in the negative x direction. Then if it's moving, let's say it's, uh, it's still moving out, velocity is going that way, I'm not putting that vector here on this, I want a free body diagram, so only force vectors. So if the velocity is in this way, then linear drag, we're told we, we need to use, and its magnitude is bx dot, which makes sense for linear drag, and it's going to be opposite the direction of this velocity. So this will be minus bx dot. This I should really write it this way. The magnitude, x dot can be positive or negative, so I want to do a magnitude, I better take the absolute value of that. But in this case, if it's moving to the right, the drag force is going to be to the left. It's going to be in that direction. There's a minus sign, because x dot would be positive in this case. If v is, is to the right, then x dot has to be greater than zero. And that minus sign will make that force in the negative x direction. And a driving force Ft, so there's going to be another force we're going to add on. This, this derivation is pretty much the same as what we did for damped harmonic oscillations, except that now we have forcing as well as damping and the whole deal. So we're going to have some other force. So that could be to let your legs, when you're kicking, to, to get yourself uh, higher on a, on a swing. Uh, this could be some kind of oscillatory force, or any force actually, um, that you exert on this mass in the x direction. So how are we going to find this? Well, we're going to appeal to a good old friend um, by the name of Newton. And let's look at the forces in the x direction. Well, I've got Hooke's Law and its component in the x direction, as we discussed before, is minus kx. We've got linear drag, and its component in the x direction is minus b x dot. And we've got uh, some force, f, acting in the x direction. It could be positive or negative. I've shown, it in this, I've shown it in this case to be in the positive direction, but f could be negative, so um, in the opposite direction. That's the forces. This is the sum of forces in the x direction. All those are forces. And on the right-hand side, we've got mass times acceleration. 
And we're about done. We're supposed to find the equation of motion. Um, that's it. We're just going to rewrite it in a little prettier way by bringing this negative kx and this negative bx dot over to the right hand side of the equation. mx double dot plus bx dot plus kx equals f of t. And that is it for that concept. So for this one, now we're going to rewrite this equation using the damping constant that we defined earlier for damped harmonic motion. The natural, natural frequency of undamped motion, we wrote that before for damped harmonic oscillator. And then we're going to also define a driving force per unit mass, which is that driving force F measured in newtons divided by the mass of the object. And the way that uh, we do it is just divide through this whole equation by the mass. Um, so this term, when we divide by the mass, just turns into x double dot. Merry Christmas. This term becomes b over m. And from this equation, b over m is 2 beta. And then finally, k over m, well, that's starting to look like the natural frequency right here. So if we square this equation, we'll get omega naught squared equals k over m, and k over m is exactly what we have here. Then finally, we have f, the driving force, divided by m. And that's just, by definition, the driving force per unit mass, a little f. And that's the end of that one.